Hello, you have clicked on to Weather God's Wisdom, where we talk about tropics because it's hurricane season. So, always refer to the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service offices as final decision makers on Tropical Storm Karen and Tropical Storm Lorenzo and Tropical Storm Jerry and this thing. And keep in mind that I am not a meteorologist and I am only saying opinions and Yes, that is all. Anyway, so we've got a lot to cover here in the Atlantic today. We've got a uh, tropical storm Jerry. We've got tropical storm Karen and tropical storm Lorenzo. We're going to briefly cover Jerry and Lorenzo first because I believe they do kind of deserve some time, I guess, maybe. So we're going to talk about Lorenzo. Lorenzo has is a very large system. This is just an impressive and an amazing system system that has come off the coast of Africa and now is now well west of the Cape Cabo Verde Islands. And you can see impressive banding signatures all along and all throughout the system. It's very well defined. The only problem is that it is experiencing some mid-level shear that's in here that is preventing it from really getting itself together quickly. And uh, obviously its size is also preventing it from doing that. But we could probably see a well-defined system that comes out of this and it could get very strong in the next couple of days and the National Hurricane Center confirms that this is definitely going to be a hurricane and possibly a major hurricane out here in the middle of the Atlantic. Anyway, that's all on Lorenzo for now. Nice looking storm out to sea and just, yeah, probably going to add a lot of ace or accumulated cyclonic energy to this season. Next, we're going to talk about Jerry. Well, fine, Jerry. It's right here. So, Jerry has essentially been sheared to pieces. You can see most of the moisture associated with Jerry is now to the far east of the system. And you can see that Jerry's in here and this upper level low that it has cut off is just destroying Jerry here. With shear, you can see the shear and the milky white clouds that are coming off of this and has imparted a lot of dry air. You can see the dry air in here that is being imparted upon the circulation. This will eventually tear Jerry apart. And so, I mean, it already has, but even the circulation of Jerry which, if you look at infrared imagery, is still there, but you can see that it's not really there. So, yeah, bye-bye, Jerry. And you can see that National Hurricane Center, while it does have a very large tropical storm force wind field, has dropped the tropical storm warning for Bermuda because the system is incredibly weak and could actually just completely degenerate into a remnant, remnant low sometime within the next 48 to 72 hours, and they expect that. And so this system really, its only significance now is determining Karen and its ultimate route here. And since Jerry is so much weaker, it has much less implication upon what Karen is going to be doing. And so we're going to check out Karen because this is the most important system in the Atlantic right now because of possible impacts regarding the United States. But obviously this is several days out from doing so. And actually, let's look at the National Hurricane Center forecast first. You can see here that there is pretty high confidence that this storm will move due north-northeast for the next couple of days before stalling out here. You can see this is 72 hours and this is 96 hours. You see it moves um, not a lot. And so that's where a lot of this stuff starts to come into question. You can even see on the cone in three days that, you know, it starts to get big. But now the full forecast, you can see it's very highly uncertain and even the intensity forecast within the next 24 hours and of course through this entire event is pretty uncertain here is why so we've kind of discovered today that karen is not a very well organized system but has been trying to organize all day and you can actually see in here this very faint signature that is a lower level circulation that is developing here 
is very removed from the convection and the mid-level circulation in here. And this is not at all a vertically stacked system. And it has been trying to do that all day. I think it interacted with Puerto Rico enough to where the mid-level circulation kind of rotated around the island. And the lower-level circulation has just continued on northward and has kind of left this behind, this blob of convection. And so what's happening here and why you're seeing this giant convective burst that's now north of the island is because the low-level circulation is out here and is bringing kind of this onshore flow that has contributed to this just really exploding. And we're going to see if this can kind of form a lower level circulation in here. And we're starting to see hints of that. If you look at the recon data, I'm gonna update this, you can see that here's the main lower level circulation. You can see right here that there is kind of a secondary circulation in here that's not very well defined, but you can see that winds are coming out of the southeast here and winds are coming out of the northwest here. And it's kind of elongated and you can see that it's, this is not a well-defined system. You have multiple points of where there is rotation and there is kind of a circulation in here, but this is not well-defined and the system is still struggling and the problem has increased a little and now we don't know uh, what the system is going to be up to in the next couple of next 48 hours because this has happened and we don't know if there's going to be a center reformation further to the west or there was a center formation reformation further to the east today and this probably will die out if there is no convection that is supporting the system and you can clearly see that there is absolutely no convection associated with this and there is convection here that is associated with a mid-level circulation that has kind of gone over the island and we may actually see a recon reconsolidation due to the land friction that ha the island has produced that puerto rico has produced and so we could actually you know see us see another center reformation under this giant ball of convection that has exploded and is clearly approaching the, st the stratosphere and but overall today the system has tried to improve an organization and has ultimately failed due to interaction with Puerto Rico. And um, this is just not a very well-organized system. And I think the GFS, which has noted that there were there are multiple vorticity maximums here, is kind of hinting at something. I think it's t still too weak. And obviously, it just completely destroys it up in here. I don't think this is even a tropical system at this point. And it kind of just doesn't really do much with this. You have the vor vorticity maximum in here that's moving into a very sheared environment. And part of the reason that, you know, north of the islands, this is not really a favorable environment is because there's a lot of dry air that is going to be imparted upon the system. And if you look at the 700 millibar um, dry the relative humidity you can see that this is not exactly the greatest environment for a system to be heading into because of two upper level lows one to the north and one to the south over here that are going to be imparting shear upon the system this one to the south is not going to be as prevalent but this one obviously you can see that the relative humidity values are pretty miserable in here for the system and so this is not a very great thing to be looking at if you're a tropical cyclone, especially if you're wrapping it around your circulation and it is a major portion of your circulation now. And that's that's a lot of dry air that's being associated with it. But if it can survive this, you can see that this is a very moist mid-level environment. Unfortunately, it runs into another problem that is mainly shear that is being imparted from the northeast here. And so that and you can see that on the upper dynamics at the shear that's not right um is being imparted upon the system as this upper level this that's actually mid-level shear excuse me that's my fault um 
because you can see this upper level ridge is beginning to develop and obviously this is still very far out we've got 186 hours before this happens and what happens while the system stalls well we don't know so we are patiently awaiting this system to move for the system to move north and you can see that even in the five day forecast this is not really that well defined and you know a lot of disagreement amongst the models here that uh with what to do with the system and this is just not not a very fun situation to be in if you're a forecaster because you've got stronger european model that you know takes this and we're going to compare this to the gfs is around the same position as the gfs but it's much stronger and keeps it alive a little longer and could actually intensify it in here a little bit even if it survives the shear that's being imparted upon it. you can see it actually does intensify it a little and whereas the gfs has pretty much nothing in here and the intensity models kind of show the same story if you go to the h wharf on karen you can see that around hour 126 this is not a very powerful system and if you look at the 10 meter wind in here this is not even a tropical storm this is a tropical depression and it kind of fizzles between tropical storm and tropical depression in here and i think that most of the intensity models here don't really have that fantastic of a grip upon the system right now because of what is happening with the inner core and the fact that it is not very well defined and so a lot of variability is going to be shown in here because at the same time that the h wharf has this as a you know weakening tropical depression the h mon has probably if i'm right oh it has tropical depression but you can see that it intensifies it a lot more we're going to go back there we go has as a hurricane right here and the H wharf has nothing. Well, it has a weak tropical storm. So we're kind of waiting to see what this storm does. And ultimately, this is going to be a very long process because it still has multiple days over water before it turns to the west, even if it, if it even does turn to the west. But this could track uncomfortably close to the America to the United States. And we just don't know yet. Because this is a five-day, this is the maximum reach of the five-day forecast. And you can see it's pretty far away from the Bahamas, even. And so got a lot to figure out with Karen. Stay tuned for the latest. And as always, thanks for watching.